morning everybody foggy one here since we might be taking a slightly different direction with the channel talking a little bit more about uh, making your own fertilizer and growing vegetables and fruits and stuff I thought it might be a good time to do a garden tour right now we're in the middle of July this is our brand new garden we set up this year and we're just starting to get good harvest of cucumbers and squash and we got tomatoes and corn and uh, peppers on the way. Oh, let's go take a little look. Oh, let's not forget our watermelons. Never really done too much watermelons, but we're in a much warmer climate yeah. now. And watermelons like that warm climate. All right, so we're gonna show you what's doing good and what I have questions about. <laughs> So I thought the watermelons were dying, and I guess they are, because it seems like they are fully ripe. And we got the little tendril right here, and it's turning brown, and usually that's a sign that your watermelons are ready. So we're going to cut into that one today and give it a test. Another big one hiding here. Oh, there's a little baby one there. All right, so we do have five watermelons on five watermelon plants. So that's one per plant. Oh, look at this little kicking worm. What the heck is that? Ew! Ew! That's weird. Ew! <laughs> Ew! All right, so this is our yellow squash. Ew! We did this bed straight in the ground, no gopher wire. And there was two yellow squash right next to each other. The gopher completely killed this one. So it's a good thing we planted two side by side. These are our pumpkins. This is the very last one to get planted, so it's going to be the last one to produce. This one and this one, we started indoors a little bit early and then moved them outdoors. To get a jump on the season and this bed will be done within a few weeks and we'll be ready to start our brassicas so we'll be doing uh cauliflower and we'll be doing broccoli cabbage and brussels sprouts in this bed soon all right we got our our chocolate mint and our spearmint and we got room for peppermint as soon as we acquire some. We've got our smart pot with our potatoes. More potatoes and an onion. These are our tomatoes. These are yellow pear. This is our cherry variety. This here is our mortgage lifter. We've had good uh, results with this in the past. And this is our champion which appears to be doing the best. However, we are seeing signs of disease. But there is a fruit here, there is a fruit. Who's that, who's talking? Me. <laughs> there we go. What, what's going on? There is a fruit here. There is a fruit here. Yes, but the undeniable fact is we have wilt. Okay. This could be vermiticellium wilt, this could be fulsarium wilt. And these things, then these are just very susceptible diseases or these are very um common diseases should i say for tomatoes and typically they come from the soil so when you splash the water on the leaves it can uh, transfer over which is why which is why i pruned everything up so well and we've got our beets going here too beets and tomatoes seem to do well together And we have our pepper garden. So in the front, we put cilantro. And I need to learn my peppers a little bit better, but typically we want the lowest growing ones in front and the tallest growing ones in back. But that didn't happen this time. We have some cayennes here, some habaneros. Um, we have a bunch of bell peppers in the middle. They're just starting to produce. There it is. 
Um, I'm not sure what these are. They were labeled Anjoxa or Anjoya. <laughs> Anjoya pepper. I did not purchase these, but apparently we have some uh, some wax peppers, some yellow banana. Some serrano, our sunflower to attract pollinators. And this is a little strange to me. So we have Thai hot and Thai hot. Now look at this. This plant is much different than this plant. Now they're still growing like firecrackers, grown straight up, so. Maybe it's a tie hot, but definitely different than this. You can see the, the, the leaves. There's no way that these leaves are the same as these leaves. However, the sticker says they are. Okay. And then the poblanos. The poblanos are usually going to be the tallest that I grow. And I always put those in back. All right. To the cucumber bed and our green bed now when you're doing greens in the middle of the summer it was 103 here yesterday so you can see we have some flowering issues so when you have greens in the summer they bolt which means they flower and if they flower all the nutrients go to those flowers and they go away from your leaves. Now, the leaves is what we want. We want our leaves to be nutritious. Now when the nutrients leave the leaves, then they taste way more bitter and not very tasty at all. So if you are living somewhere where it's hot, sometimes it's a good idea to water in the morning and at the hottest part of your day as well. And that'll keep your lettuce from bolting and all your greens from bolting so we have summer crisp here we have uh, butterhead lettuce in the back and we've been harvesting the butterhead lettuce just like this we'll cut it in the middle and about a week or two later we'll have a bunch of new growths coming back so we can get multiple harvests off of each head now the cucumbers, we just had to go for get to one of them, you can see the mound. So the cucumbers I didn't realize that I should be pruning. Because the same reason with the tomatoes, if the leaves are on the ground they get wet, they're more susceptible to disease. But also, your fruits end up on the ground and they're more susceptible to pests, which is another thing. So we have these side shoots right here. These can actually be pruned if you can't tie them straight up. You want to get everything off the ground and going up your trellis as soon as possible. And that's going to make it easier to water and it's going to keep your plants safe. If you're doing spinach in the summertime, I, re I would uh, recommend the red Malabar spinach. It does very well and um, you can plant it in clumps too. I actually like planting them in clumps because you can see they'll twist around each other to make their own ladder. And it's very good. It's got kind of like a nutty t taste to it. It's thick. Mmm, it's crunchy. It's very good. Highly recommended. Okay, off to our corn bed. We got our uh, Ichiban eggplant up front with our strawberries. Don't normally have luck with strawberries because the birds get them, but we have our bird netting. So I'm hopeful this year. And we have our black beauty eggplants. And of course our corn. Now this is uh, sweet corn, silver queen is the variety. And I have never seen a corn with so many 
um, ears on it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six possible ears on one stock. Usually you're lucky to get more than two. Now the ones in the middle are a little bit later to develop. You can see almost no ears have developed on the ones in the middle. I'm not sure if uh, they're spaced too close, but I did about uh, 18 inches apart with 24 in between rows. Should be sufficient. Now one thing I noticed about the corn, they started growing with these crook necks, but they're starting to, to flatten out. And I like to have uh, sunflowers in the corn as well. Sunflowers will bring the uh, pollinators. It's supposed to be 16 foot sunflowers, but this one seems to be more ornamental. And we have our lemon orange tree too. It's been uh, through quite a lot. I am not the tree expert. I am learning a lot and I will share that with you guys while I can. Oh, it looks like there's ants on here. It's not one pest, it's another with this thing, huh? Tomatillos, that's one other thing. I have always been good at getting large tomatillo plants, but Acquiring tomatillos is another story. So one year I had a giant plant, and just like this, there are no fruits on it. There's one. There's one fruit possibly that's developing, but we have nothing we can eat at all. So I was told that you need to have two plants because they don't uh, pollinate themselves. Something to do with the same genetics, they reject it. So neither of these are getting fruits on them. I have two plants. It's what I think is they cloned these plants to propagate them. So if we have the exact same genetics, then having two plants that are clones of each other is still not going to produce fruits. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I'm not sure why else I don't have any fruits on these tomatillos. If you know, the answer to that, please share with me. That would be very appreciative. One other problem I'm having with the beets is leaf miners. Now these just seem to be a problem every time I grow beets and every time I grow Swiss chard, which looks very much like these beets with the red stems and all. Now these leaf miners, because they go and burrow inside the leaves, you can't spray them. So you have to actually physically find out where they are and squish them with your fingers. I have no idea how else to, uh, to take care of them after they've invaded. However, I usually don't have these problems until the beets are ready to harvest, so it doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. It would be if the leaf miners were going to other plants, but then they seem to only be attracted to these beets. So yeah, leaf miners. If you know how to deal with leaf miners once they've uh, infested your garden, please let me know how to deal with that. All right. All right, it's time to harvest this watermelon. And then we're going to go inside and see how good and red it looks. Pretty sure all these watermelons are crimson sweet. The variety. No dirty nose dog. No dirty nose. <laughs> Alright, we're going to see how good this is. Let's give the thumb test first. Sounds like it's full of water. Mm -hmm. Mmm. 
Maybe could have gone a day or two more. It looks a little pinky instead of red. Nevertheless, we can give it a try. Oh, look at all those seeds. It's like a real watermelon. <laughs> Definitely a real watermelon. Oh yeah. It's good? Yeah. Color don't mean a thing? I'm not, I'm not sure how it could be sweeter. I mean, maybe it could, but this is great. <laughs> Color don't mean a thing. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Mmm. Mmm. Homegrown food. Really didn't take long. That was like 60 Ooh. days, I think. Mm -hmm. This is good. Yeah, 60 days from the time we transplanted to, to now. This is really good. Hell yeah. And the chickens could have some, and Izzy could have some. Oh yeah. Yeah, chickens love the, the rinds. It's actually good for them in hot days. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Keeps them cool on hot days. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh shit. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the garden tour. A uh, slight preview of what's coming up next is if you've ever grown zucchini or squash of any kind, you probably did one plant and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this extra zucchini? I can't eat it th all this, you know? So <laughs> what we're going to do with it is we're going to turn it into fertilizer. So we're actually using yellow squash. The yellow squash is producing okay. very well still. And um, we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into fertilizer. And the only thing that we're going to be using is brown sugar. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave some comments. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Till next time.